Welcome to today's lesson where we're going to talk about a key concept in dialysis known as dialysis adequacy. So if you have a patient who's on either hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis, it's not enough to simply say that they receive dialysis and therefore are not uremic or are not suffering from any of the signs or symptoms of uremia. There's actually a way to measure how much dialysis a person received and then to determine if that amount of dialysis was adequate or not. So to understand adequacy or dialysis adequacy, we're going to equate adequacy, adequacy excuse me, to outcome. And then we're going to talk about something very familiar to all of you, and that is a sporting event. So say you choose a baseball game or a football game or a basketball game. You know that there are three groups of individuals or three participants in that game that determine the outcome of the game. And they are the first team or team A, the second team or team B, and then the referees. So these three groups have some way of changing the outcome of the game. And that's the same that we see in dialysis adequacy. There are three teams or three parties that are involved in dialysis that have the ability to affect the adequacy of dialysis. That's the patient, the provider, which could be a physician or a nurse practitioner or even a student or a resident, and your dialysis machine. These three groups or these three entities have the ability of affecting the adequacy of dialysis. Therefore, whatever measurement we end up devising that is a quantitative representation of adequacy must take into account the contribution from each of these three groups. And that's what we're going to try to devise today. What are the factors or key factor that each one of these entities controls and uses to affect adequacy of dialysis. So let's erase this. And let's start talking about adequacy. And so the first person, uh, or the first group, first entity that has an effect on dialysis adequacy is the patient. And so we're going to we do this. The patient. So, you could probably surmise that dialysis adequacy is in part going to be affected by the amount of uremic toxins a patient has. A patient who's placed on a dialysis machine who has less dialysis, less, excuse me, uremic toxins is going to have a better adequacy if everything else is kept the same. So those patients who have more uremic toxins are going to require uh, more dialysis if they're going to achieve the same, quote, adequacy. So the way we represent the amount of uremic toxins that a patient walks in the door with just before they start dialysis is the volume of distribution of the toxins. Now, historically, we use urea nitrogen, or BUN, blood urea nitrogen, as a marker for the amount of uremic toxins a patient has. So the volume of distribution is actually BUN. Now, it turns out that the volume of distribution of BUN is the total body. And therefore, it's just the volume of distribution. So that's what the patient contributes to the adequacy of dialysis. Now let's look at the provider. So we're going to change this. Now the provider is you. You don't control the amount of uremic toxins that a patient walks in the door with. But you do control the amount of time the patient spends on a dialysis machine. So the feature that you control to affect adequacy of dialysis is the time on the machine, or T. 
and finally we have the machine itself. So the machine or the dialysis filter which is the heart of the machine, the most important part of the machine, the dialysis filter does not control the time that you put the patient on dialysis and it does not control the amount of uremic toxins a patient walks in the door with. But what it does control is how effective, how effectively it can remove those uremic toxins over the time that you prescribe. So the quantitative measurement of the ability to eliminate uremic toxins over a certain amount of time, that rate is known as clearance. Which is going to be represented as a K. So when we put these together we get the following. Dialysis adequacy is going to equal your clearance, K, times how long you're on dialysis, T, and divided by the amount of uremic toxins you start with. This is dialysis adequacy, the KT over V. So you've got a K which talks about or focuses on the machine's contribution to the outcome of dialysis or adequacy. You've got time which is your contribution to the adequacy and you've got volume of distribution which is the patient's contribution to adequacy. So let's talk a little bit further about these three parameters and then we'll conclude this lesson. So let's clear this. So we've got this KT over V. We're going to try to figure out exactly what does this represent. All right, so let's talk about the K first. All right, so the K is the clearance. The clearance is defined as the amount of blood that goes through the filter or the machine that can have all of its uremic toxins, in this case BUN, removed at the end of the machine over the time it takes to do all that. Now clearance is can be simply defined as basically the blood flow. So you could just say if I crank up the blood flow to 450 mils of blood per minute, then my filter ought to clear 450 milliliters of blood in that one minute time. The reason that's not necessarily the case is because the filter is not a perfect filter. You can imagine that the filter is just like your filter in your vacuum cleaner or in your air conditioning system. Over time, as the filter is being used, it is not effectively removing all of the uremic toxins that pr are presented to it. So the K is actually somewhat less than the blood flow that you give. And the way to determine what the K is, is to simply look at the package insert. So you get a filter, and it's from a particular manufacturer, and you look at the insert, and you say the uremic toxin that I want to eliminate is BUN. This is a filter that is being used for the very first time, so it's not being reused. So we'll call it first, first use. And I'm going to set a certain blood flow say 450 mils per minute. How much clearance, in other words, how much blood over that minute will actually be devoid of any uremic toxins after it goes through your filter? That's your K. So you just look it up in the package insert. Now the T is very easy to do because that's something that you control. How long are you going to put the patient on dialysis? And that's usually in minutes so there's nothing complicated there. And then you've got the volume of distribution. Now you've chosen BUN as the uremic toxin or the marker of uremic toxins. And the volume of distribution of BUN is total body water. So you can calculate that very easily. You just figure out the weight of the patient and you multiply it by either 0.5 or 0.6 depending on whether if it's a woman or a man. If you had chosen another uremic toxin, then you'd have to alter that uh, volume of distribution based on how that toxin distributes across the body. But since you've chosen BUN, this is a very simple calculation. So you just look up the K, 
you set the T, you calculate the volume of distribution, and you get yourself a KT over V, which happens to be what we call a dimensionless number. In other words, you have mils per minute over here, then you have minute over here, and you have volume of distribution in liters or milliliters, which cancel each other out. So you have mils per minute times minute divided by a volume, which you will get in liters, and multiply by a thousand, or excuse me, divide by a thousand. Excuse me, liters multiplied by a thousand. So the minutes and minutes cancel out, the volumes cancel out, and you get a number that is completely dimensionless, no units. So what does the KT over V represent? So you get KT over Vs that are approximately between 1.0 and maybe 1.6. That means that you've taken the total body volume of the patient and run it through the machine one time. If your KT over V is 1.6, you've taken the total volume of distribution for that toxin, which in this case is total body water, and run it through the machine over one and a half times. That's what the KT over V represents. And that's your measurement of dialysis adequacy because it takes into account three of the key features that the key entities play in the outcome of dialysis. The greater your KT over V, the better or more adequate your dialysis. The smaller your KT over V, the less adequate your dialysis. And that's today's lesson. Thank you very much.